Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our video on section 7.6 entitled Calorimetry and Specific Heat Capacity. Now, we haven't talked about what calorimetry is yet, but we know what specific heat capacity is. Specific heat capacity is a measure of the amount of energy needed to change the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Might be lowering it or might be raising it up, but you're still changing that temperature by one degree Celsius. In your investigation, we uh, were putting hot metals into water. So we had known temperatures of our materials, which were metals. We put those hot metals into water to heat it up. And they were recorded the change in temperature of that. So heat was transferred. And that the process of that heat transfer allowed us to determine the specific heat of that metal. That's essentially what the objective was in your laboratory. You had to use this, the relationship between heat, mass, specific heat, and changing temperature given to us in our Q equals MCAT equation. This process you guys did in your coffee cups was called calorimetry. Now let's break it down what calorimetry actually is. Calorimetry is the science that is associated with determining the changes in energy of a system by measuring the heat exchange with the surroundings. So that's a very fancy way of saying the heat lost by the system goes to the surroundings and you look at that environment as a whole and you determine the changes that were made as far as energy is concerned. And that's called calorimetry. <clears throat> In our experiment, the metal can be seen as your system. You know, you had hot metal and you put it into a, an environment that surrounded its surroundings, the water. And there was a heat transfer between the two. Heat goes from hot to cold. So the metal released energy to the water. And that's the relationship that we see here. The heat of the water is negative because heat was released. Sorry, the heat of the metal is negative because heat was released. And it was released to the water. The heat lost by the metal is the heat gained by the water. That's why we have a positive value here. So we can set them equal to each other. Heat lost by the metal, heat gained by the water. Now, some other things that we can point out. We know that Q, the heat, is also equal to MC delta T. I can use this equation because I know this in the red here. That the heat transfer is measured through a change in temperature. You know that there was heat transfer because you read on the thermometer that the temperature changed. Thus, we can talk about that heat in terms of a change in temperature, MC delta T. So the Q of the metal is MC delta T, but since I lost heat, I would say that, you know, this is a, you know, the metal. And the Q, or the heat, gained by the water is also due to some temperature change. Or I can read that heat due to some temperature change. I'll put these on the same plane here. And because these Q values are equal, I can set these equal to each other too. This is of the water. This is known as calorimetry. The heat lost by the system is gained by the water or gained by the surroundings. And this equates to this down here. The heat lost by the metal is equal to the heat gained by the water. So I can use the mass of the metal, the specific heat of the metal, and the change in temperature of the metal in relationship to the mass of the water, the specific heat of the water, and the change in temperature of the water. These two values should be equal. And if I didn't know the specific heat of my metal, which was what our laboratory was about, I can use these other parameters to solve for the specific heat of my metal. This is calorimetry, gentlemen. You'll be using this in a problem set very soon.